that are waiting, that have been waiting for this live stream to begin. Thank you so much for being patient. We were supposed to start at 10 o'clock, but due to, due to some uh, unexpected circumstances, we we had to stretch much further to 10.30. Thank you so much for being patient with us. Today's conversation is going to be about how to, um, uh, what does it take to own a home in Uganda? And um, with uh, Anthony Muchiri. Anthony Muchiri is a consultant with Channel Partners Uganda. And uh, he has a lot of information to share with us today. So kindly share this live stream. Share the live stream with your friends, with your family, in your different WhatsApp groups. We want a lot of people to come and join this stream. We believe they're going to um, they're going to learn a lot about housing in Uganda. And please feel free to join this conversation. I shared this, this, the, the link so that um, you, you're free to come in if there are any questions that you want to ask. You can either post your questions in the comments section or you may do so, uh, you can actively enjoy, uh, join the, the live stream and we hear from you if you're into the housing sector or if you have any concerns, we'll be happy to respond to them. Um, Anthony, over to you. Could you kindly give a brief introduction? Oh, yes. Uh, good evening. My name is Anthony Muchibi. And like William has rightfully stated, uh, I'm a consultant, a management and a sales distribution consultant based here in uh, Kampala, Uganda. I run a, a firm that uh, does consulting known as Channel Partners Limited. And uh, really our specialty sales and distribution uh, will look at helping startups uh, launch out and scale. We also look out uh, for companies that have been in the business for a while that may need support to grow, uh, to grow their sales or that could have hit a sales slump and need uh, training and refocus of their strategic efforts. So yes, that's, that's mostly it. Yes, Anthony, um, um, we have several people on our channel, on this uh, uh, platform, who are very interested in, in um, owning a home. Majority of these people do not live in Uganda. Many of them live in the diaspora. Some are in Africa, but in different parts of Africa. Um, and many of them left the country purposely to go uh, for better opportunities, like we say, in the hunt for greener pastures. But at the end of the day, many of them are interested in, in building homes, in starting a family here in their very own houses. Could you kindly um, probably share what you think the possibilities are in terms of owning your very home in Uganda? Could we possibly start with uh, what are the different ways in which one would probably achieve um, having their own home back here in Uganda? Okay, uh, I think just to give it some uh, start from the top, uh, I'd like to just uh, mention the, the need to understand land ownership in Uganda. Uh, and I'd like to explain that if you're a citizen of Uganda, the law provides that you can obviously own land. Now, for those that are not citizens, and I bring this up uh, because obviously Uganda and many parts of Africa have been uh, seen as uh, places that people can go to, start families, start homes, uh, and own property. Uh, but uh, for citizens, obviously, it's, it's a given, it's a right that you have, uh, and it's clearly stated in the law that uh, the land in Uganda belongs to us as citizens, and we shall vest in it uh, in accordance with the law as they have provided with the Constitution. Now, for those that are not citizens, citizens, uh, they can only have land ownership through lease. And lease, obviously, is also uh, easily defined uh, to mean somebody giving you land uh, sort of to hire for a period of three years and over. So you can agree uh, with somebody to come and lease your land, especially if you're not a citizen and you want to do, uh, say, have a house, have a business, own land in Uganda, you have to have a lease. If you're a citizen, this is more or less clear cut. All you need to do is find land that you're interested in. And that land uh, would also take several forms. We have about 
four types of land ownership in Uganda. Uh, the very first one being freehold. Uh, it's critical that uh, these types of uh, land ownership are understood because when you're seeking out land, especially if you don't have land now and you want to go into, uh, say, purchasing land to build your own home, starting point of is the land. So the freehold is land uh, held or owned by an individual registered on the certificate as the owner for life. Okay, and on this land, you don't have any Chivanja holders or any supporters. Your name appears on the title, and that's what you have uh, as your uh, piece of property. And this is quite uh, the most popular piece uh, of property that people have. Most people hold, uh, have land, have it under freehold. And then the second one is Milo. Now, Milo land is land held by a landowner, which has its roots from the Uganda government, if you remember which word. The Nigerian and the 1928 Usul law. And this is mainly in the central region of Uganda. Uh, and the, I think that's where people hear uh, things like Kakali and Kabaka, where Kabaka had this land. And the male landowners have the same rights as freehold landowners, but they must respect the rights of lawful and bona fide occupants and Chibanja holders to occupy and live on the land. Uh, for instance, a Maryland owner may have some uh, supporters and people who are called Shivanja owners who may not necessarily have a piece of paper to show that they belong there, but because of all sorts of scenarios and the uh, placements that we need, they found themselves on this land. The law is clear that they cannot just be sent away, but they must respect as the arrangement that the actual Maryland owner has over them and that property. The third one is the uh, leasehold tenure, which I just mentioned under lease, uh, where, uh, which is mostly common for people who don't have uh, citizenship in Uganda, foreigners. And this is where a landowner allows another person to take exclusive possession for a specific period of six years or more for rent. Of lease. A lease may be created either under a contract between the parties or by law. The person granted the lease must use the land for a specific purpose as agreed with the landowner. So the lease, yes, it's open to foreigners and it's open to people who may not be citizens in the country, but even the citizens themselves are uh, open to have lease, uh, to lease land or to lease property as an option in case uh, they're going into uh, land or preparing to build a home. So that's somewhat a background of uh, what uh, this whole thing is like. Uh, from three years onwards, that's leasehold, even up to 99 years, uh, some leaseholds have been seen holding that length of time. So, so going back to your question, I think the beginning, we needed to look at that uh, for people to understand that those forms are what are currently in existence in the country. And it's good to know what sort of land uh, you'll be going out for if you're into uh, starting to set out for your home. Uh, so, William, I think I can now proceed to uh, the home issue if the land issue seems to be put to bed. Yeah, um, Tony, uh, thank you very much. Yes, you've shared quite interesting facts. Uh, you've, um, you've, given, you've given us the definitions of Milo land, private land, public land. Um, you've, you've told us what the implications are or the requirements if somebody wanted to uh, to purchase or own that kind of land. Um, however, uh, now we could probably also discuss issues uh, pertaining, say, if somebody wanted to acquire, say, a mortgage. The land situation, I think it's clear cut. You, 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 your foreigners do not do not own land; they lease land. It, uh, for, uh, between 49 years, okay, from 49 years, they could, it could be either 49 years or 99 years, that is clear cut. I wanted you to throw some light on um, on, on, on mortgage, or the mortgage situation in Uganda. Have you, have you um, acquired any mortgages? Do you know people that have acquired any mortgages in Uganda and what the process has been? Oh, yes. Uh, around mortgages, 
you'll find that uh, the entirety of a homemaking project or a house building project is quite a costly one. Uh, for a small, say, two bedroom, even three bedroom house, people will go uh, to excesses of, say, 50, 80, even 100 million shillings for just a simple home uh, to get it uh, completed and habitable. So what this created is the issue around raising funds, sort of uh, moving to uh, the next levels of building. Now, the mortgage system is simple in such that it, uh, it provides you with an opportunity to start your home or house project without putting down all the money that is required. Or even when you feel you don't have that money, now to raise it at once under mortgages, you can get sort of support. Now, let me explain it like this. In a, in a layman's language, it's a lump sum money that you put down. It's like a loan. It's actually a loan. Uh, you'll get this property. For instance, you have uh, a house that you're interested in getting or land. And this land uh, or even house requires for you to have, say, 50 million down payment to start to own it. For instance, if it's a shell or it's a title piece of property. Now, you may not have that 50 million, but there's a bank or a financial institution that has 50 million. Now, what the bank has done under the Mortgages Act, okay, they have provided you the platform where you go and tell them, okay, this piece of property, be it a house or a land that I've seen, costs, say, 50 million. And right Attorney. now, I would want to invest or to own this property. Attorney. But I don't Anthony, have 50 million. Interrupt you. Yes, William. Anthony, uh, the viewers say that you're not very clear. You're, you're not clear. I'm clear on their end, but uh, you are not clear. Could you do something? Could it be... Um, How? Try to do something? Uh, is it better now? Uh, let's continue. Let's continue. If it isn't, then I'll let you know. Hello. Is it better, William? There's a bit of there's a bit of an echo. Okay. Perhaps maybe. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that mortgage. You can continue. Is it better now, William? Yeah. Please. I continue. Yes, please. Okay. What I'm saying is that. What I'm saying is that mortgages can be taken by businesses and individuals. Uh, but <clears throat> the only difference that makes a mortgage what it is, is that it is a vehicle that banks uh, and several financial institutions use to lend people money that want to own property that can't put all the money down all at once. And uh, the example I was using is that if you want to buy a house, a complete house or a property or a piece of land, that is say going to cost you 100 million shillings. On the onset, you don't have 100 million shillings, but there's somebody in the bank who has 100 million shillings. And all these people need is for you to prove that you can pay back their money. So a mortgage, a mortgage uh, sort of issuing institution, say a bank or a lending institution, will ask you for security. Okay, because you're asking for, for 100 million, the security they may need for you to get this financing is something like maybe your job, you show that you have a salary and the salary will be going through their bank. So you'll enter into an agreement with them and they'll say, okay, we're going to give you this much money for you to buy the property. We have the money, okay, for you to pay it upfront and you own it. Now for us to get back our money, we will enter into a mortgage agreement, okay, where you'll be paying us our money back in these increments sorry, in these uh, uh, installments of your salary, which is coming through our bank, okay? Now, if you don't have a salary or something like uh, gainful employment where the bank can deduct their money, they can take on security. For instance, you can have a piece of land, say, in the village, which can act as collateral for you, all right? And then the bank can see how to negotiate to see that they give you money using that security for you to now uh, buy the property that you want. 
So the mortgage, uh, the, the other difference that makes it different, uh, that makes it stand out from the other sort of credit facilities, is that for the mortgage they'll give it for longer periods of time, because like we've seen, it requires a big amount for you to put down on a project, say a house, 100, 200 million. And now, if they put that in a short span of time for repayment, like two to three years, you'll find yourself paying back a huge amount per month in these repayments. So for it to be easy for you to own property, they have sort of expanded the period between which you're supposed to close your payments. So mortgages can go from 10, 15, 20 years of you paying back in small increments or small installments till you clear uh, the bill of your debt. So yes, it is an instrument through which banking institutions and lending institutions offer you money that you can put down on your property, your house or land, and then you can own it as you pay them back. So that's the, okay. the, the, diff, uh, the definition. Okay, uh, I thank also you. I want to make uh, 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 William, can you hear me? Yes, I wanted to say that um, for those that are joining us right now, kindly um, like this video and uh, comment. Then let everybody know that this is happening because this is a very sensitive uh, subject that we are talking about today. Kindly let everybody know. If you haven't liked this video yet, please go ahead. We want it to go much further than just the a few of us that are online currently. Um, Zanzan asked about the mortgage situation in Uganda, and I think you've been able to explain it uh, clearly to her. Uh, thank you so much about that. I'm seeing there's somebody else here who has mentioned. Uh, Zanzan says, in UK, mortgages are normally 25 years. So, Anthony, uh, could you clarify how about in Uganda? What is the situation for mortgages in terms of um, time period? In Uganda, it varies uh, with whichever institution you've gone to, and uh, they can stretch out from 10, 15, up to 20 years. So yes, uh, in the UK, it's not much different. You negotiate with your banker, and they can stretch it. Uh, I've seen people own property here uh, up to 30 years. Uh, so yes, uh, she's on to something. In Uganda, from 10, 15, up to 30 years, you can have uh, that agreement agreed upon with your banker. Um, okay. So, um, Anthony, besides mortgages, there are people that might not qualify for mortgages, mm. but uh, they, they have their money. They have. They can probably send money back mm. home and and um, start on, on, on their building projects. Do you think that is a good idea? Yes, yes, that's a good idea. Uh, however, the way you do it is what is critical. We, we've we seen so many stories on social media, even with friends and relatives, who uh, have their hard-earned money spent and wasted when it's sent to friends or relatives back home to do a project. Now, uh, I've, I've spoken about this in a previous forum where I say that this still happens today because obviously... The people you're entrusting also have issues of their own and they can be tempted to, to use your funds to sort of uh, attend to their emergencies. Now, the other, uh, the, 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 the route out of this is to use contractors, is to get people that you can commission companies, existing companies, the existing construction companies in the country. And when I'm speaking about construction companies, I'm not talking about the big ones like Rocco, uh, and the, all these Stalini that have been doing uh, big, big projects, okay? There are smaller companies with people that are professional, with people that have registered businesses in the country. Now, what these people will do is that, depending on where you want to start, if you want to start at, say, the architecture drawing, they'll come and direct you to which person can help you draw a plan of your house, and then from there onwards, you can sit down and agree with them how you're going to phase your house. You don't even need to have a contract for a house to start and finish. You can phase it into three parts and say, I want you to give me a bill of quantities. Now, a bill of quantities is a list of items that I'll need 
a list of items of materials that I'll need to get my house from the ground up. So this contractor can tell you, okay, if you want a two-bedroomed house, using obviously the drawings that you've picked up from your architect or your sketches uh, or your draftsman, whoever is going to draw a house, these contractors can give you a bill of quantities of what it will take from foundation uh, to wall beam to roofing up to completion. So now that will give you an estimate of what you need to plan with. So you can say, if my house is going to cost me 100 million shillings, from start, that is digging uh, my plan, <clears throat> digging my foundation up to when the bricks start coming up and we put a slab, is going to cost 10 million shillings. So if you know that that will cost 10 million shillings, you commit and say, for the first phase of clearing my property, putting, uh, putting the plan down and excavating the land and starting up to the slab, what time are you going to take? You said it's going to cost 10 million shillings. You need three months. You sign on that and it starts and you release the funds. Now, unlike family members and friends who you send money on Western Union, they pick it up and start whatever uh, that uh, you've told them to do. Here with a contractor, there's an agreement or a contract. And a contract or an agreement are documents that are recognized by law here. In case this contractor does something funny, you can follow them with the law and get your money back. And since they're registered, you can follow them up and they are, they are penalized with the association to which they belong and still you get your money back. So that is the upside of sending money, but through contractors. Get a contractor, take time to pick these people. And obviously, uh, I've seen a, question, uh, a comment from Zanzan saying that these construction companies can rip you off. Yes, that's very true. These two can rip you off. How However, do, do some due diligence. Look at uh, who they are as a business. If they have some references, read them. And there are also people that you work with abroad or that you live with in the community who will tell you, okay, I've used so-and-so, they've worked well for me. And then you can also go behind and do some background checks. But this I'm, I'm sharing because people have come under huge losses for trusting relatives and friends to do projects like this. With a third party and a contract in place and phasing your work, saying we do uh, step by step, you'll see that the exposure is not as much, okay? And then there is a way that they can share with you status updates. They can share pictures, they can share uh, uh, videos. And then now, this is when you can now call your friends and loved ones to double check that what they are sharing is actually what is on ground. Now, still on that same example, of building, even when you're looking for property, it is also good to use property agents because we've had a lot of uh, issues coming out of, uh, especially those people working abroad, sending money through friends and relatives and them uh, either eating this money or getting for them very, uh, very questionable land, which has been sold so several times, or even being duped. When you use property agents, these are registered companies Still, you need to do your due diligence by checking who they are. But you stand a better chance of having a title in your names and land which is, uh, which is clean, uh, which doesn't have any issues when you use real property agents. Unlike when you send through family and friends who may not actually know all these uh, ups and downs. So yes, it's good uh, to use contractors to find third parties who are established in the business. Do your background checks. Try and see what work they've done before and then contract them. Sign your money using a document where you can hold them accountable if something goes wrong. Okay? Anthony, thank you so much. For those that have just joined this live stream, kindly yes, subscribe yes. if you haven't subscribed yet. Uh, like this video, we want it to go much further than uh, the people that are on this channel. We want, to, we want it to reach everywhere, especially for to the Ugandans that are living in the diaspora. We want them to know this information because many of them look for this kind of information, but they can't get it. So I want to give you a moment. If you are on your phone and you can pick that link 
and share it in a WhatsApp group, in a Facebook group, please go ahead. We want to push our numbers to at least 800 subscribers. We would want to go 1,000, but well, we will go 800 this time. The 1,000 will come in. Uh, this channel is for sharing information that we really find very pertinent. Please uh, take a moment, share. And if you want to join this live stream, I have already put the link to this live stream. If you want to join and probably throw in um, something that you really want to say, feel free um, to join the conversation. It's a, a free conversation and we would want you to uh, share your own perspective, probably your own experience. Then we will gladly, uh, let me throw in the, the link. Let me throw the link here. We will gladly um, have a, a proper conversation on this very sensitive issue. Um, Anthony, are you still with me? Yes, I'm still here. Yes, Anthony, now there are people that would want to build and they don't necessarily want to work with uh, with with construction, say, uh, because you see, like Zanzan had mentioned, there are some construction workers who are actually expensive, or some of them might not be as trustworthy. Do you think they are, I mean, do you think it's possible for somebody to deal with um, people that are more affordable or are they really affordable? Because the question is, are these people really affordable? Because you see, when people, when, when people are trying to invest into this sort of venture, they know it's a huge investment and they would want to look at the most affordable contractors to deal with. So could you please share some light because we wouldn't want a situation where somebody is actually scared to start. Where, where can they start to really take on this a very serious project? Okay. Uh, yes, they may not be uh, completely and 100% free uh, of a ferry for people who are going to deal with. But it's a starting point. Remember, at the start of this discussion, you mentioned that uh, some people abroad or people not working in Uganda may be interested in putting their home or building house back home. And Actually, you know audio. how they could do it. Uh, you already have such Okay. Uh, okay, sorry about that. Is it better now? Yeah, it's better. It's better. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so, so what I was saying is that using a third party at times, many times, will save you, okay, the headache of trying to use friends and many times relatives who do not know uh, what to do, okay? Now, I've seen Zanzan's question, she's asked here whether I'm an architect or a builder. I never made that introduction in the beginning. The experience I'm sharing, right now I'm a homeowner and I'm using that experience to share. Uh, and some of the things that I've gone through, I've also tried to use those to explain uh, what you can use to, uh, to build your home. Uh, in the experience that I have, I've used contractors, and I've used um, individuals that I've also come across uh, from uh, the building sector to see that uh, my home is built. However, in these areas, you need to be keen. You do a background check to understand who you're dealing with, who you want to give your house project to. So Zanzan, that is your, your answer. But now going back to the uh, issue of third party contractors and whether you're going to make some survey. Uh, with these people the there. Which using friends and relatives. Now, the making of saving. The question is, but yeah. how can someone sign a document at a long distance with contractors? Mm. Oh, yes. Now, the signing of the contract or agreeing with a third party, that one may not necessarily be done in the beginning. Okay. Don't look at that as what you need to start with. If you just go back at the beginning, you need to first make uh, baby steps, baby steps. If you have the land and your land is in the good books, it is titled, it has no quarrels, it has been secured properly. 
first of all, secure that land. If you can and you're not around, find a way to fence it because people have a way of uh, nowadays reselling land that's not even theirs. Okay? Make sure your land is secured. Now, it would be good to have yourself, the landowner, or somebody you really trust, okay? A proxy, they call them a proxy. Somebody you can assign the duty of coming and doing your due diligence to check this contractor. The reason I say that, long distance, like we all know, be it in business and relationships is a bit tricky. So if you say a long distance signing of contracts, you're sort of meaning that you cannot assign anyone else to see this contract signed for you. I say that because it would be good if you're here and you sign it, or if you cannot actually be around to sign, you assign somebody that you really trust. It could be your mother, your big brother, your sister, somebody that you trust. And you, Anthony, can I cut you short? and you make sure that this can hold in court. Yes. Uh, Master Glory here is saying, I think you've seen the comment. I think the best option is to go home and supervise the building. The building works to a certain point. Then come back, save your money, and go back again until the project has been completed in your presence. Um, what is your reaction to that, Anthony? Uh, yes. I think also Boss Babe has a lot, uh, a lot of validity in these comments that she's making. However, I think the submission I'm making is for those who may not uh, be in position to come down and supervise the project. In a previous discussion, I think in another forum actually, we've seen people who go to say uh, uh, contract uh, positions where they have a job say for two years and they have a contract for two years, four years, five years. And within this contract, they have some money that can do work and they may not be in position to return home. Okay. Now, for those guys, they may need to assign a third party. Now, for people like Master Boss Babe who can come, that's the best way to do it. You can come, supervise your own project, and see it to completion. But even when you come, yeah, you can still engage a contractor. Because when you come, remember, you may not know who does what here and who is good at what here. But when you identify a good contractor, a good builder. Many builders, because of the sort of business they do, have decided to put themselves, uh, I've, I've seen several of them put themselves in groups and registering themselves as a company. Because if you find a person who's very good at good playing and you lift your house from the foundation up to slabs, you reach a place where you need to say, put windows and you don't know who to go to. But because some of these people have come into groups and have registered themselves, you could find the whole group getting that contract to help you do your work. Okay? And you don't necessarily have to tie yourself to them. If they do a good job, well done. If you find an individual doing uh, parts and pieces and you join them together, that's also good. The point you're trying to drive at is to minimize the risk of loss of your money, to minimize uh, theft, okay? But also have some savings as you work because you don't need to know how to do everything. You can find these people and they can assist you. I wanted to make mention of the condominium uh, options in the country. In 2001, we had the Condominium uh, Property Act enacted, which allows for one to have a land title for a specific housing unit, or what they call a condo, within a building. Okay. Now, before the law came into force, one was only able to purchase the entire flat, but not individual units within the flat. Let me explain what this means. Within, before 2001, if somebody wanted to own a flat, okay, or an apartment within a flat, you couldn't do that. But after 2001, when they enacted the condominium law, we've seen a lot of apartments coming up or uh, for, for a better word, they're called condominiums. The condominium is built, say, a flat that compromises of, say, 20 or 30 units. Now, each of those units is a full home, maybe two bedrooms, three bedrooms, all in that flat. Now, under the Condominium Act or Condominium Law now, you can have a title and only one or two of those units, okay? So instead of going to 
set out a bungalow or a house on you say 50 by 100 plot, you can save your money buy a condominium unit. Now, there are several condominium units that some we've seen being built by national housing. Even the banks like Stan has some along Nigeria and many other uh, urban places and uh, very urban towns where Anthony, they put up apartments, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, and these apartments, yes, we them. Yes, you have a buzzing sound. There's a buzzing, buzzing sound in your audio. Uh, try to rectify it. I don't know what there's something, there's a, some sort of an interference. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Try to fix it. Is it, is it, is it better now? Uh, well, I think it would be better. I don't know whether it's your earphones okay. that, are, that are buzzing no. or something. What I was saying, what I was saying is that under the condominium, is it better now? Yeah, yeah. Let's go on. Yeah. William, can you hear me? I can hear you. Your image, your image is not moving. Is it better? Yeah, it's all right. Hello. Yes, you can. You can proceed. How is the connection now? Is it better? It's better. Yes, please. Okay, what I was saying, uh, I hope the connection is better for you now. What I was saying is that under the condominium uh, law, yes, you can get a flat, an apartment from a flat and own it as it is and have a title to it. Uh, right now, they are a bit expensive because for a two-bedroom, right now, they're between 160 and 180 million to own it. It's a finished flat. And once you uh, get your keys, you just move in with your staff and live there. Okay, so you have a title to that flat. And you can just move in and use it as your own. However, for those who may not be in position to fork out that 160 million and over for a particular flat, building your house from scratch, okay, getting land and starting from foundation up to when you finish is also a possibility. So those are some of the options we've been speaking about. So the good part about all this is that as a citizen, wherever you are, you have rights to own land. And it's good that you look out for this land by doing the due diligence. Most preferably, use property agents, uh, those that you've checked out and that are having good, well sought out land. Now, the way you can check out property agents, most of these people have maps of the land that they are selling. For instance, you'll see, say, Jemai or Zion. There are several examples. And within their office, they'll say we have a property, say, in Matuga, in Gaza. And they'll show you a map, and they can even take you to inspect the land. Now, because they are registered, they are somewhat more trusted than individuals. But you can also do your other checks and ask in the community whether the land that you've inspected is actually for this property agent. And if so, then you can now check uh, with the local councils, the people in the area to double check and see that what they are saying is correct. And then you can go ahead and sign a contract with these property agents and get your land. Okay. Anthony, now, there's that a, there's a reason for a lot somebody more than some individuals who show that they own the land. And even the papers may be true that they own the land, but then there is a lot of funny games that people are playing around land especially on an individual basis, which some property agents may not do. But the critical part to avoid all uh, loss, please do, do uh, due diligence by double checking with those that are in the land business. Anthony, somebody mentioned yes. that um, there was a reaction from somebody, yes, I think you had, you had somebody question, here. Actually. Yeah, Zanzan here, uh, she was saying that 160 to 180 uh, meters for rather mean, yeah. I'm, I was I was saying that Zanzan life dot me. You're, you're breaking, William. I'm not getting you clearly. Okay. Sorry, we've lost Anthony, uh, but I'm sure he's going to be back anytime soon. So Zanzan life dot me, you posted something here. You're saying that 100, 160 
to 180 million for a two bedroom condo. Yeah, that is true. But I think there are other options. And I believe uh, it also comes down to the location where um, you where you're going to get this condo that uh, that you're interested in. So it is true, those condos are quite expensive. Um, but then it's not a one time payment. You they give you a payment schedule, then you're able to um, you're able to pay off when you're comfortable. For those that have joined, I can see um, Mr. Musinguzi online. I can see Nabu Kenya Pasi, uh, Zanzan, obviously. Uh, thank you for joining this live stream. If you haven't uh, hit the, the subscribe button yet, please do. And uh, hit the like button as well. We would want as many people to find out that this live stream is happening. We are discussing what does it take to own a home in Uganda because most of our friends that leave Uganda for the greener pastures, their purpose is to go make money so that they can own a home in Uganda. So kindly go ahead and share, 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 share. We don't want anybody to be left out. And um, I really encourage you to like this, rather to subscribe to this channel so that um, we don't get to miss out on anything. Anthony, thank you. I can see you're back. Can you hear me? Anthony, are you all right? Anthony, are you okay? So for those that are joining this uh, live stream that I've just joined, Hello. please note that our conversation tonight is about what does it take to own a home in Uganda? We are discussing the different options. You can either build your own house from scratch. However, we know that there are things that you're supposed to be mindful of lest you lose all your money. Somebody here earlier advised that you can come uh, for the very uh, inception of your building, uh, deal with it, then go back and probably save more money and complete it. But do not leave the project to start. Do not allow the project to begin without you. Otherwise, your money might go missing. So, Anthony, are you back? Anthony, I cannot hear you. William, uh, I lost you there. Yes. Um, welcome back. Sorry for the inter for the interference, but I'm glad that you're back. So I was still I doing a recap. Saying I lost you there. Can you, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. It was just a recap, but um, you can still go on. I think you left the off. The connection is very poor there. today. Uh, I seem not to have a problem on my end. I seem not to have a problem on my end. Uh, Anthony, speak to us. Yeah. Anthony, yes, please. Could you please speak to us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, Anthony, uh, somebody was asking. Yes, 160 to 180 million is too much for a condo. Could you please react to that? I, I didn't hear that. Uh, Zanzan Life.me was saying, she was saying that 160 to 180 million is, too, is a lot of money for a two bedroom condo. Could you please clarify or uh, shed some more light? We seem to be having a connection issue. William, uh, yep. the connection is quite poor. Uh, but uh, the connection is quite poor, but I, had a, I saw the issue that Zanzan had raised about uh, the condo of 160 to 180 million. Yes, the prices are seemingly high because you're seeing the full picture. What 160 million gets you is a complete unit. It's in a guarded community. It is with a perimeter fence. Some actually are showing that they are planning facilities like swimming pools, 
uh, security inside that uh, uh, housing complex. They have things like uh, shops that have been provided for. Uh, for those that are familiar with the, uh, the Chanja side of, uh, of Chisasi, you know what Akrite apartment started, okay? Some people doing condominiums have started doing exactly this, okay? Where they have most of these facilities in-house when they are setting up these apartments. Yes, Anthony? William? Yes, I can hear you. Please proceed. Yes, can you, did you hear that? Yes, I, I heard that. You could you could go ahead without yes, the what camera. I was some, what I was trying to summarize is that uh, the condominium costing for two bedrooms and three bedrooms. Can seem a bit high, but because they're offering you a full package, which covers a full complete unit uh, within the flat, security and those other amenities that uh, they provide in a normal working home. So it may seem big, but uh, it is equivalent to some houses which are standalone in their own plots of land. I hope that is clear. So Anthony, you can you can you can proceed with this conversation without your camera because your picture is really um, not very good. Yes, there's somebody here who says that Anthony Hello? is probably using uh, a mobile network that is not very stable. We've lost Anthony. I have the link to this conversation. If anybody wants to join us, please, you can just go through. Um, we do have the link here. If you feel like you'd want to join this conversation, please feel free. Feel free to hop in, um, ask your question, or you could share your situation that you've gone through. Then we'll be able to get a response from Anthony. Yeah, Anthony is really having trouble today. Um, we hope to have him back. So our conversation today is literally about how does one get to own a home in Uganda? If you're living in the diaspora, wherever you go, wherever you are rather, um, many of, uh, of, of, of those individuals that have left the continent and have, uh, have gone for greener pastures, one of the things that they really want to have is a home. And now our conversation is how are they going to, what do they need to do to have a home securely? How, how are they going to go about this in a manner that uh, will ensure that they are actually getting value for money that is the topic of discussion today. Uh, we've spoken about uh, condominium uh, condos that are, that are available in uh, gazetted communities. The gazetted community, if you've been to, if you've been to the areas of Muyenga or Munyonyo, okay, we've all seen these adverts that have been running around of Mirembe Villas, Mirembe Estates, Estates or Villas. With the uh, uh, gazetted communities where, um, in that particular community, people share. They actually have their own. Um, they have their own shops. We could call them supermarkets. All the services are within that uh, gated community. They have. They have. They could even have uh, recreational centers within that same gazetted community. The security is shared. So, uh, and the houses are quite spacious. They are okay. Um, so, uh, Zanzan was asking why they cost that much. Yeah, but truthfully, when you've been in such spaces, you would you would, uh, you would appreciate that it's it's not a bad deal at all. Um, this is not an advert. We, it's not a sponsored video in any way, but we're just talking about the, the several opportunities that are available for you to consider. You can still do more research to find out which other alternatives are there in place and then uh, make the decision. We are here to share information that will help you get on board um, get your home because you obviously want to have your own home at the end of the day. Anthony, I can see that you are back. Yes, yes I'm back. Yeah. Sorry about that. I was doing a recap on the alternatives that we have. I can see somebody here in Canada. Let me just throw up the post here. She's saying, 
Lily Vibes, greetings from Canada, was just asking my mom about buying a house back home. I'm looking forward to this stream. Can't wait to return home. Yes, uh, that is that is very, very valid. Uh, owning a home is one of those things that everybody, even the ones that are living in Uganda, everybody wants to own their own home. However, there are individuals that don't want to go through the hassle of building a home from scratch. Perhaps they would prefer to buy a fully, a fully uh, rather a home, a house that, has, that, that, is, that is already built. They don't want to go through the, the bustle and all, um, and, and all those difficult conversations that happen after somebody has been ripped off. So Anthony, could you please uh, perhaps enlighten us on the advantages of buying a fully, uh, a home that has already been done? Could you please throw some more light? Do you think it's a good idea? Yes, uh, it is, uh, there's advantages uh, and disadvantages uh, for building a fully uh, uh, finished house where you just uh, buy, get your keys and move in. Uh, the good side I can begin with is that you don't suffer the hassle of uh, managing builders, even the contractors we've just spoken about. Uh, you don't suffer issues of trying to uh, make sure your cement is stolen. Uh, you get something that you like, you pay, and you enter. Uh, the other good thing is that at times, you find that uh, most of the people doing these houses will get for you uh, good builders that will come with a complete picture of a beautiful home. Now, the disadvantage of that is that many times, because they're in business of selling houses, you pay a lot of money for it. You could pay, uh, say, 20% more than the value of the house, 50%, even sometimes you pay 100% more. A house that you could build with your team and your own resources for 100 million would cost 250 million when it's fully complete. Because these people are also in for the profit. Okay, and the other downside is that at times you do not know the strength, the structural strength, or the structural integrity of this house. For instance, uh, what sort of cement mixture did they use? Uh, if I'm going to uh, be in this house for say 10, 20 years, when will it start breaking down and require repairs? So some of, some of those are the risks you may face uh, when you buy a completed house. Uh, however, there is a middle ground where I've seen some people who are buying shells. Uh, that's a house which has been built and roofed, but not completed. So you can still see the bare bricks and cement. You can still see uh, the inside is not tiled. You can still see uh, the walls are not cemented. So you can see it in that raw form, and then you put your finishing touches to it. Uh, this used to be done by national housing back in the day, but now some individuals and even companies are doing it. They buy land, subdivide it into plots. Now, they put shells in complete structures onto those uh, pieces of land, and then you come and you buy them. And then it is up to you to complete that house like you wish. You do the finishing touches yourself, and then uh, you enter, okay? So that is the, uh, the other angle that some people can take. Uh, I can see a question here, a comment. Uh, from uh, eating the African West saying it is ex so expensive to buy a finished house. I think three times after budget. Yes, he's on to something. A finished house, yes, would be a lot more expensive than when you build it on your own. It has its advantages, but also its uh, disadvantages. Uh, but it would be more advisable if you have the time and its resources to support you to build a house and to build it yourself. If you can't, you can consider a fully finished or you can look at a shell where you can now put in some little work to bring it to completion. Yes, Anthony, thank you so much for that input. Yeah, so uh, for those that have just joined this stream, like, uh, if you feel like you want to join this stream, I've shared the link. You can click on, we will invite you so that you can share your perspective on this very important conversation. Go ahead and share this video. Now, Anthony, uh, the question that I have in mind is um, the locations of where you think people should should have these um, the, the best the best locations where you think people should consider if they want to 
to build homes, what are those things that they should look out for in terms of, um, say, uh, electricity lines or power, su power supply, uh, water availability? Uh, what is your take on that? Are those very critical things to consider or you could start and wait um, until uh, National Water gets to that particular location uh, or Umeme? What is your take on, on that? All right. Um, I think those the, the utility lines are to, to just give you some background. If you're going to build a house now, you won't pick a place that is near town. You won't uh, be so lucky. And obviously, this is dictated by a budget because people have really gone into construction and a lot of land around the city has been taken up. Uh, you can still find some empty plots in Kololo and Tinda, we put all these places that are near town, but they'll cost you dearly. They'll be quite expensive. So this has forced people to go in the uh, peri urban and part of areas like Gaza, Chitukutwe, after Chira, uh, Nansana. Now, the further you go, obviously, the fewer the uh, amenities. For instance, sometimes the water lines have not reached. Umeme, power lines have not reached. Uh, the access roads also may be not uh, fully there. However, most of these areas have started seeing development follow them because as the population increases and as people uh, start reaching out to these places, they come with the development. Because if you move into an area, like say in Chitukutwe, after Chia, you'll find that you may move there as say five homes, but because you want your home to be, uh, sorry, you want your community to be better, you yourselves building there will start uplifting the area. Because after you move into such an area, you will start seeking national water, Yakra, sorry, Umeme, telling them that you need the service. And because you're paying customer, they can start moving into those areas. So at times, looking for where water is and where power is may not be a good indicator because sometimes you can leave property, which is good, just because those lines are not reached. And then you look out for much more expensive property because it has those. But critical things to note are uh, planning in the area. For instance, if an area has well planned out roads, you can see that there are access roads to, to your plot, from your plot into the main road. You can see uh, that the community is organized, okay? That there's a lot of uh, structure in the community. There are leaders, and those leaders are respected, and these leaders also respect the community. Those are some of the soft issues to look out for, uh, just after looking out for these other big things like the power and the electricity uh, and the water. So look at the leaders, yeah. look at the setup of the community. Sometimes you find people with good property, but because of the way the community is set up, for instance, you find that you've got a 50 by 100 plot, but then all around you, there are smaller, smaller broken down plots. Maybe somebody in front of you has a 20 by 10. Another one has started by 20, meaning there is no order. Okay? Meaning if you want to create an excess road, you won't have where to pass it. Okay? So some of that uh, disorganization can kill the value of your property and also make your home uh, difficult uh, to develop or then build. So look at how the dynamics of the area is. Is it a well planned area? How is the leadership? How are the road? How is the road network? Security is also critical. Security is critical yes, because you can find property that is prime, but in a hostile environment. Yes, like you've the mentioned, security does not appreciate you as, you as a person of the family. That can also be a downside. You can have a wonderful property, but because it is insecure or because there are hostile communities living in the area, you end up costing your investment. So it is critical that you pick up on those things as you move along. Security is critical because we only have water and power. And you live in say next to a slum where they are not having uh, enough meals for the day and you're putting up this beautiful house. That may come in yes. to haunt you uh, later. So you may need to look yes. at all those squarely. Anthony, can we respond to some questions? There's a question here. Um, there's a question coming from yes. uh, Maso Beb is asking, do non-Ugandans abroad wanting to purchase property need to have a Ugandan passport?
Uh, we had actually looked at this in the beginning. Now, non-Ugandans wanting to purchase property will not actually own property outright. What they can get is lease. They can have leasehold. Under lease, you can agree with the person in charge of the property for a period of time, from three years even up to 99 years, to have ownership of this property. But under lease, because the law does not provide for non-Ugandans, all those who are not citizens to own property. So they may not need the Ugandan passport, they can just come as they are, but they'll sign a lease agreement and then they can agree with the property owner what they want to do, whether they're going to say do business, put a commercial building, or even a home, because some leases run up to 99 years. But then Anthony, the person that has given them the lease will have the actual ownership of the land. But the business, uh, the property, like the home or the or the business, will now be for this land Uganda. Uh, Anthony, there is a question that um, I have from uh, from an individual here. Somebody is asking: Is it allowed? Uh, rather, uh, does is it, does the government allow a foreigner to buy a house, a fully furnished, uh, rather a fully complete house? Do you think that is accepted? Yes, yes, yes. Under the Condominium Act, you can still lease. You can still buy it under lease, depending on who is running the... Like I said in my submission, there are several companies running the condominiums. So it is up to them to see whether you can outright the pay and own the title under lease, still under lease, because they're not Ugandans, and then they can obviously enjoy the property, but under lease. Yes, Anthony, I have another question. A friend of mine was asking me earlier in the day that is it possible for you to build a house using 25 million Ugandan shillings only, a three-bedroom house? Is that really practical? What's a three-bedroomed house? Yes, please. Uh, uh, 25 million shillings seems on the low side. Um, just to give you a, a simple example. Now, for you to have a three-bedroom house, just imagine we're starting from scratch. The foundation alone, depending on the size of rooms that you wish to have, sitting room, dining, uh, kitchen, where they're going to have a kitchen inside, then the three bedrooms. The sort of size it is going to occupy, just the base of that house, will need like say, five to 8,000 bricks. Now when it is out of the ground and you want to put windows, you see, all these things you have to factor them in. After windows, you go to the roofing, all, the, all those timbers, that are going to hold up your roofing, the iron sheets or the tiles that you're going to use, the glass and the windows, all these together contribute to what? Contribute to the bill. So when you say... Uh, We've lost Anthony. Anthony has gone off once again. Uh, today's conversation is still about how to own a home in Uganda. I see there's a question here from a um, gentleman called uh, Fulgencio Kabubi Wamala. Building yourself gives you the chance to tailor the plan according to your needs or liking. Things like how many rooms, size of rooms, garage, kitchen, compound, and the entire setting. Thank you so much for, submission, for that submission, uh, Mr. Kabubi. Anthony, are you back? Anthony? Thank you. Yes, Anthony, there's somebody here has shared an interesting comment. He's saying that building yourself... Yes, thank you, William. Sorry, yes. I got cut off there. Mm. I think you can see the comment on the screen. Yes, uh, William. 
that point that he raises is a critical one. Yes, it gives you uh, a chance to tailor the house of the plan of your house, and then it uh, also gives you a lot of uh, room to play around and be, uh, be flexible. So yes, it is correct. He's onto something. It is true that uh, if you build your house, you'll get exposed to a lot of more. Okay. Anthony seems to be having a bit of some bit of interruption from from his side. Yes, uh, full GNC or Kabobi, it is true. You have the freedom to do exactly what you need in terms of design, um, the size of rooms, the garage, the kitchen and everything. So that is a very critical submission that you've shared with us. Um, I have a link, I shared the link in the description. You could, even in the comments, we have the link here with us. If you want to hop in and share any thoughts on, on this particular subject, please feel free. Um, I can see somebody here called Lily Vibes. Can you give us some brief advice about the legality process dealing with before and after purchasing a home or land? We will get back to that when Anthony gets back onto the, the live stream. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please consider subscribing. Like this video so that other people may see it. Today's conversation is how to own a home in Uganda. Uh, safe it's property. We all know that foreigners do not own land. However, they can lease land for uh, either 49 years or up to 99 years. So that is the land situation. Then if it's about a, a buying a house, you can buy a house as a foreigner, but under the lease, under the lease clause, you still don't own it because um, you, you're not a Ugandan. However, the beauty of this is that for instance, if you've lived in Uganda for a period of 20 years, you qualify to become a uh, Ugandan and then you would not have a problem with, with taking on the property that you've had for uh, that period of time. For instance, if you've lived for 49 years and, and of, of the 49 years, 20 of those, of those years, you've been living in Uganda or if you've married a Ugandan, it's very easy for you um, to own that property they are on. Um, I can see here Maso, Maso Boss Babe, she's sharing something to say that Chris, I agree, I prefer a finished product. I don't know what Maso Glory exactly means by a finished product, whether I should want to buy a, a finished product. Uh, probably I should go back to Chris's comment. I could have skipped it. Chris is saying, uh, Lubulwa Chris Fitness. I will disagree with Wamala. Personally, I think building it's more expensive and draining than buying an already finished property. I've experienced it myself. Yeah, I think um, uh, Lubulwa, you, you, you have a valid point, but I still think that it still goes back to the types of, uh, to the credibility of the contractors that you're working with. Um, in my neighborhood, I, this, there happens to be a gentleman building a house and then this particular his building units and he's, he's using the exact people that helped him use his first, that helped him build his first units. He called them back and now they're building an extra three units. And then what I noticed, I had a conversation with the supervisor and I had that you need to create, for instance, if you're into real estate or you're building your own, you're building houses for say, um, um, for people to rent, you you need you you have to understand the dynamics the the builders or the contractor that you have they'll always find a way of ripping you off if you're extremely too hard on them unfortunately that seems to be the truth on the ground that if you seem to be extremely hard and difficult and probably overly supervisory and and uh, snooping around on them and treating them less of people they still can find ways on how they can mess up your entire calculation of, of the budget that you had planned for your for your building. So it is true. It could be expensive if you're dealing with the wrong people. That's why I think it's it's imperative that you look for people that you get you get a few references of people that are, are really um, authentic. 
so that you don't get into the situation of losing so much money if you decide to go the route of building your very own house. So it's unfortunate that Chris, you went through a situation where you spent much more when you decided to build the house yourself. Yeah. Um, Anton is not yet back with us here. I can see um, full Jen Sioka will be still his back. He says, it is also possible to move into your home once it's habitable. You then complete as you live in, as you live in it. This means that you need about only 40 to 50% of the budget. Yes, that is very true. You do not have to finish the house. Rather, if you're not able to finish the house right away, it's, it's very advisable to get into your house and complete it while you're moving, or rather while you're, um, while you're living within the house. Because now the thing is, the money that you would have spent on rent, you'd be trying to patch up those uh, particular areas of the house that are very critical. You'd use the very amount of money that you should have paid for rent to fix some of those things. Maybe if it's the windows or, it's the, or if it's the floor. And then I've, I've also heard that Interestingly, it's, 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 it's the ladies or it's the wives that push the husbands to move into the houses that are incomplete. Ladies have the insight that they don't understand why you should continuously parent when there's a house that they believe that you're soon going to um, get into very soon. So they usually push their spouses into the unfinished building and uh, they do that because they know that they don't want to go through the stress of the landlord knocking, yet they know that there's a house that is quite habitable. They could simply finish it probably in a couple of couple of months. So uh, yes, gentlemen, if you're on the stream and your your wife, uh, your better half is pushing you to get into that incomplete house, the, your wife is not insane. She's actually smart. She wants you to spend uh, the rent to redirect the rent that you should have paid to the stranger whose houses you've been living in, into the house that you both are building so that you can complete it. Nobody will be stressed. Anthony, welcome back. Can you hear us? Anthony? Anthony is not yet here. I can see there's a reaction from Patrick to Gume. Anthony? Yes. Yes. Yes, Anthony. Welcome back. We had lost you just there for a minute. There's a reaction here from an individual. Anthony is off once again. Uh, a finished product may not guarantee you good quality, durable house. Some guys do shoddy work, give it good coat of paint, but when it's substandard material underneath. Yes, we've seen, we've seen some of those pictures trending on social media where a house is really crap. You look at it and obviously you'd know that at the slightest, shake of an earthquake then it would obviously crumble so we have seen that but i think it also goes back to um you see there are certain people that tend to uh, um want uh, they tend what they tend to suggest prices that probably are, are not really favorable to whoever is dealing in in housing so they'll always find an alternative that they think you can you can afford so um, sometimes people have a tendency to extremely bargain so you eventually find yourself either buying a house that that fits within the budgets that you're squeezing uh, whoever is trying to look a house for you so but uh, bottom line surely uh, building a house rather buying a house that is fully done would be a problem I think it would be it would be proper for you probably to buy a shell the shell is an incomplete house whereby you obviously look at how it was built from the ground up you'd see um you, you can literally tell the state at which it is because they haven't they haven't done the cement there's no paint job so you'd probably get into that sort of house then finish it up so yes patrick thank you for your contribution for those that haven't subscribed to this channel yet please feel free like this video, we want it to go much further. We want other people in the diaspora and Ugandans to get to know how best they can own houses. Anthony, um, I hope you're able to hear us.
Yes, Anthony. Yes, Anthony, can you hear me? Anthony. Anthony, I cannot hear you. Yes, please. Yes. Yes, uh, thank you. I can see you're back. Sorry about the poor network that you're having. Oops, Anthony is away once again. For those that have just joined us, please, the conversation we are having is what does it cost to own a home in Uganda? We've heard that you can't own property if it is land. If you're a foreigner, you can only lease it up, uh, uh, up to 99 years. Uh, but if you're Ugandan, obviously, you have to be very careful when you're buying property. You need to check with the land office whether it doesn't have any encumbrances. Zanzan, I can see you're asking something here. Uh, Zanzan, you're saying, I think if you can go and build, supervise, it's better. Otherwise, get a good trusted project manager who can keep you updated 24-7. Yes, Zanzan, you're, uh, you're absolutely right about that. Somebody earlier on said that you'd rather fast fly in. For instance, Zanzan, uh, I think you're in Australia or in the UK, one of those countries. Somebody suggested that you'd rather come back, start your project, then... Uh, leave it in the hands of a trusted individual or a project manager, then probably come back later after you've raised more money and probably finish up your house. Well, that is that is one of those other uh, alternatives that one could take on. However, if you're not able to leave your current country of residence, it would mean that you'd have to take some chances, look out for uh, trusted uh, contractors and, and get your house uh, done for you. So, Anthony, can you hear us? Anthony, I cannot hear you. You're, you're really having trouble. Anthony, can you hear me? Hello, William, I can hear you. Okay, yes. This, um, you're really having yes, trouble. Yes, yes, Sorry, my connection is poor today. Very poor. You're really having a problem. So you can still, yeah, you can still throw in your contribution. I think you How can about see. Now? Is it better now? Yes, it's better. Um, we were reacting to. Yes. When you uh, left Ali. Yes, I've been seeing the comments coming through. Sorry, my connection has been poor. Yeah, could you react to Patrick Tugume's comment? Anthony, I think you're unable to continue with the live stream. You're really having a problem. William. Yes, please. Yes, my, yeah. my connection is very poor. Okay, could you could you continue the stream without the video? Yes, did you have a question? Yes, I wanted you to react to Anton to um Patrick to Gomez uh, comment. I, I think you can see it. Yes, I I could see the comments. Okay, please share a reaction. Anthony? Anthony is having difficulty to continue with our live stream. Yeah, my connection is really poor. I'm not picking you well, but I've seen the comments from Patrick and the Zanzan. Yes, we can hear you. So, uh, friends, our live stream is meant to end at exactly midnight. We are left with three minutes. If you have any questions, please throw them in the comment section. We would like to respond to them. 
thank you for joining the live stream uh thank you so much i appreciate those that have subscribed to this channel uh you're you're really supporting this channel by simply subscribing uh we get to be seen and recommended by uh, the youtube platform when we have good numbers and good conversations going on please continue uh, sharing this video i'm sure there are questions that probably we haven't we haven't tackled we will obviously get to them in our next live stream i'll probably do a couple of videos within the week to address some of the questions that i think we haven't uh responded to exhaustively so anthony are you still on yes i'm still on yes anthony could you please share your final part in short because we need to conclude in the next two minutes oops anthony is away <laughs> okay sorry about that um thank you for joining this live stream we really appreciate that you've been you've taken some time off we started this live stream at 11 at, at rather at uh, 10 30 and i can see we still have a couple of members that are with us thank you so much for all your contributions we do appreciate and um, uh, for those that have questions that we haven't responded to yet kindly put them in the comment section I'll gladly invite an expert in construction to respond to these questions. Um, if you're living in the diaspora, feel free to share this link with individuals that you think um, are interested in building homes back here in Uganda. We will definitely, we will definitely um, get an expert. We'll get experts to come and discuss some of those things that we believe um, they should know before making such uh, uh, serious uh, investments. There's um, uh, Anthony, are you on? I can see uh, full chance CEO Kabobi once, once again is saying, and the fulfillment, yes, can, yes. yes, and the fulfillment satisfaction of building the home from scratch to completion is a great one. Yeah. Um, yeah, Fulgencio is sharing a very important thing. Yeah, um, when you build something from, from the ground up, it's different. The feeling is different. You would know that it has um, creativity and contributions from you as an individual. So you would, you, I think you, the, 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 the feeling is, is just something that you can only experience as, 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 as the homeowner who has built it from the ground up. Anthony, do you have something to say? I, I didn't pick that up, uh, but maybe just in my parting shot, I would like to say that uh, building is possible. Start small. Please phase your work. You may not need to build and plan and build the whole thing at once. Phase it from foundation. Sorry, I think he was trying to say, uh, pace yourself up if you're building your house. Um, you might not be able to do it 100% like from the onset. You might not have all the money right away to complete your house. So like uh, full Jen Siyoka will be right here on the screen like he commented earlier that you can actually, you can actually get into your house when it is incomplete. You get in and as long as if it's habitable, you get in and you uh, you can complete it using the exact amount of money that, that you'd be paying for rent. So phase yourself up, um, strike, start the conversations in regards to um, owning land so that you do not miss out. Um, you do not miss out on anything. For instance, there are places that that are affordable right now and they're not so far off from the city center. So you need to start that conversation so that you don't end up in a very remote place. You can actually buy your property, keep it up for a while. You can have some other activity taking place. Maybe you can have trees on there or um, some bit of agriculture could be taking place on that. So 
you do not have to worry that probably I'll have to maybe if I buy my plot of land it could it could be encroached upon. Of course that happens, but you need to do there are certain things you need to do so that you protect your plot of land. At least um fence it up so that the outsiders will, 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 will not have to encroach on it and have don't let it idle. Don't let it to be idle. Do something on that plot of land so that um you're not taken advantage advantage of. So um our live stream has come to an end. For all those that have contributed to this live stream, I really appreciate. Thank you very much. And I will see you in the next live stream next week. Our live streams will be on every Thursday. And then during the week, we'll have, I'll be sharing other videos on, on other things, socioeconomic issues in Uganda, uh, things that everybody would really want to know that are taking place in Uganda. Thank you for being on this live stream for this long. We've been on this live stream for one hour and 30 minutes. I want to say have a good night and good morning from wherever you are. Bye-bye. See you in the next one.